blind computation in five levels of complexity. My name is Miguel de Vega, and I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Nilium. Here we go. Level one, manipulating hidden stuff. Let's begin with a very visual example. You have a secret that is this small glass. You kind of hide it. Well, in this case, it's because the, the material of the glass has the same refractive index as that from the liquid that is filling the recipient. And so once you have it hidden, you hand it over to the nodes in the Blight computer and they can manipulate it. You can see that hand just grabbing the glass and moving it around. In essence, there's a form of data manipulation where data in this case is just that glass. But let's get a little bit more advanced and complex in our analogies. That brings us to level two the blind multiplier. In this case, what we have is a box and it has a slot and you can insert, for example, coins. Now this box is pitch dark. You don't see anything. So that's the blind computer. And this blind computer is going to do multiplications. How does it work? You insert, let's say, two coins and then you hand it over to the nodes. The nodes manipulate the box and then they just return the box back to you. Now you open it and what you see is your two coins multiplied. How does that work? Because inside of the box, there are two mirrors. And depending on the angle between the two mirrors, you can make it look like you've multiplied your two coins by three, by four, and so on. The only thing that the blind computer nodes are doing is manipulating that angle, but they have no idea what those numbers inside of the box are. But we need to bring this down to maths, which is what computers understand. Level three, the fellowship. Let's imagine we have a group of friends, Frodo, Sam, Aragorn, Gandalf, and so on. For some reason, they have a salary and they want to compute the average of that salary. But that's sensitive information. So they use the blind computer to do that. You put them as rows in this matrix, and then you also put them as columns in this matrix. And each one of them finds out four numbers so that when you add them, you get your salary. Now, if I give you one of those numbers, it doesn't reveal anything about the salary, right? So what I'll do is give my first number to the first person, my second number to the second person, the third number to the third person, and I'll keep the fourth number for me. And each one does the same with their salaries. So all I have to do is sum up my column. Everyone does the same. We exchange those numbers and we add them up and that's equal to the sum of all the salaries, which we divide by four and that's the average. Now let's raise the stakes and go to level four the toolbox. Now at this point, I've introduced a couple of analogies, like there's this box analogy, there's this other analogy where I'm breaking down a secret in pieces. Each one represents a different privacy enhancing technology or pet. The box one represents fully homomorphic encryption or FHE. The other is what's called multi-party computation using linear secret sharing schemes or LSSS. And there are more privacy enhancing technologies. So which one is the best one? The answer is all of them. It really depends on the job at hand. It's like a toolbox. You may want to use a different combination of tools for a different job. The same happens with the blind computer. Its power relies in the combination of different pets. We call it the pet net. But how do these pets really work? How do they hide information? The answer is in level five, the sword. There's actually two ways of hiding information. One is called information theoretic security. What this means is that you're not really sharing information with the people in the network. This is the example of the numbers being broken down into terms that add up to those numbers. That is the golden standard of cryptography. But most cryptographic techniques are based on another way of hiding information that is called cryptographic security. You take a problem, a mathematical problem, that is easy to create that problem, but it's very hard to solve. For example, if I have two large prime numbers, it's very easy for me to multiply them. But if I just give you the product of those two prime numbers, it's very hard for you to find out those two numbers. That is the basis for most cryptographic techniques that you find in a pet net. Think of it in terms of a sword that represents the mathematical problem. You're grabbing that problem, that sword, from the easy end, and you're handing over to your opponent the sharp end of the sword, so that if they try to grab it, it will be very hard for them. So putting all these pieces together, we get to the blind computer concept, which is combining different cryptographic techniques to open up a new dimension of use cases that can be tackled, because we're adding to Web3 what it's been missing along all this time, which is the ability to work with private information. Imagine a world where everything is built on this technology. What would it mean? 
It would disrupt whole industries because it would allow companies to collaborate without the need to share information. It would break this vicious cycle where in order to consume a service, you need to give away personal information. But above all, it would change our lives for the better. We would retain full control over our data for once and for all, even when using powerful AI. So the next time you opt in to sharing more data, imagine doing so without a second thought, knowing your deepest secrets are protected. Only you can access them. And this is exactly why we are building the blind computer at Nilium. You want to learn more? Follow us or join our Discord. Thank you for listening. See you soon.